of all, I would like to thank organizers for the wonderful conference. And, um, and in the beginning of my talk, I would like to give a short overview on the such concepts that we've done in our lab. Uh, can you hear me? Uh, the object of, of study of our lab is uh, cells, living cells and DNA uh, molecules and proteins. And we study the dynamic properties inside of living cells, living cells by using imaging methods such as quantitative microscopy, uh, which can be present, quantitative process microscopy and dactyl microscopy. Then to the data obtained from the imaging uh, of uh, cells or DNA and uh, DNA molecules, which can be the data is. Uh, The data is the coordinate as a function of time or intensity of the image as a function of time. We apply advanced image processing, complex diffusion theory, dynamic mathematical models, in, uh, and the aim is to find the model of uh, the dynamic processes inside of living cells or interaction between uh, DNA molecules and proteins. Before we we'll run into my research project, I first of all give a short introduction. Here you can see the nucleus, <coughs> and this um, yellow fiber is homocene. Homocene is a DNA complex, DNA complex complex that makes up chromosome. Once someone wanted to paint chromosome with each uh, own uh, color and uh, image in the nucleus, he saw that there is no mixture between the colors, like you can see in the picture but rather each chromosome occupies its own territory inside of the nucleus. A few years ago, it was found that each chromosome is highly dynamic, is dynamic <laughs> inside of the nucleus. So the question is, how do chromosomes remain within their territories despite of their uh, dynamic behavior? Here you can see, can you hear me? Here you can see the schematic picture of uh, nucleus this is the cytoplasm of the cell, and this is the part of the nucleus. These very thin fibers are chromatin, which is DNA protein complex, and these thin fibers are lamins. Uh, you can see that lamins can bind to chromatin, this is known from in vitro experiments, and uh, uh, it believes that lamins are <coughs> involved in the nuclear organization. So we ask ourselves, is lamin A protein involved in the maintenance of chromatin uh, territory? As I mentioned before, homotin is dynamic, so we aim to answer the question by using, uh, by studying the dynamic properties of homotin. So this property will add label cellular. Cellular is a special protein they make uh, structures in the end of homotin uh, by green fluorescence protein, GFP. So you can see the green spots are cellular, which is just uh, part of homotin, and this blue uh, color is uh, all the names inside of the nucleus. <coughs> then the first step was to perform the imaging in different uh, imaging ways. Uh, then we produce image processing in order to find coordinates as a function of time for each fluorescence uh, protein. So here we finished with biology. And then to the data that are obtained from the experiment, we applied matter processing and different diffusion theories. So here you can see the movie that we extract from the images, you can see here the nucleus, these green spots are telomeres, and there are the trajectories of each telomere that uh, he can uh, do over uh, 10 to 20 minutes. Uh, for the trajectory of each telomere, or that matter can be any genomic region, which is the uh, one here is green, I use green process protein in order to mark it. Uh, you can find all volume of movement, and everyone can understand that the longer will be a uh, trajectory, the higher will be the volume of movement, or we can produce the diffusion analysis, since trajectory is just coordinate as a function of time. So in order to answer on the question of our research, if lamina protein involved in the maintenance of homotin territory, we produce the experiment as I mentioned before. And uh, we calculated, first of all, the volume of movement in the normal cells. Here you can see the nucleus, 
And uh, with blue spot, on the volume of movement of each cellular uh, during, for example, 20 or 30 minutes in live cells. And then we did the same experiments in uh, cells uh, with lumen A depletion. So th these cells do not produce lumen A at all. And also calculated the volume of movement uh, of telomeres. And you can see the huge difference between these two pictures. In cells without lumen A depletion, chromatin is much more free to move. In order to be sure that such kind of effect is only due to the lumen A depletion, we express lumen A protein in lumen A depleted cells. For those who are not formally familiar with biology, we just added lumen A in lumen A depleted cells. And uh, we saw that telomere motion increased back to normal. So we can conclude that such effect mm -hmm. uh, of lumen A depletion to chromatin motion is only to die to the lumen A depletion <laughs> not some, uh, some uh, other effect. Then we produced uh, uh, diffusion analysis. So we took the data from our experiment, imaging experiment, which is causing uh, us as a function of time, calculated mean square displacement divided by t, presented it uh, in, uh, as a function of time in local of scale. And this blue curve, this is data uh, that we obtained for normal cells. And it goes like on the value of diffusion, such kind of diffusion we see previously and published it. And uh, such kind of diffusion can be found <coughs> in uh, normal cells, in cancer cells, after ATP depletion, homotin uh, condensation, and so on. But to our surprise, and to our luck, we found the normal diffusion for cells that uh, do not have lumen A protein. Since the curve is going like a, a pattern to, uh, to axis uh, of time. So we can conclude that lumen A depletion not only increased telomere motion, you can also see it from the graph, since this curve is much higher than this one, but also changed the type of diffusion back to normal. We also produced different uh, biological controls, since I don't, don't have a lot of time, so I will just mention them like a, question, uh, like a sentence. We express lumen A protein in normal cells to be sure that uh, we don't have some uh, strange effect, and we saw that the diffusion a little bit slight less, but not uh, too much. Then we use siRNA technique, and uh, in order to be sure that such kind of effect of lumen depletion or chromatin motion is only is not only in mouse cells but in different type of cells, not only for telomeres but also for uh, other genomic <coughs> regions, we check the effect of lumen A depletion not only in the nucleus but inside of the nucleus, and so that. Uh, the effect is still there, and we also produce image correlation spectroscopy method in order to find um, that there is no, that lumen A depletion has no effect on chromatin compaction. So, in this slide, I will try to explain by one sentence the work that was done by um, Eldad that in order to find the looking of, uh, he, he wanted to find the source of anomalous diffusion. Diffusion can be normal or anomalous. Normal diffusion means that I'm uh, doing the random walk. So it means that the chance or probability to go left is equal to probability to go right. In anomalous diffusion, uh, and sorry, and mean square displacement proportional to time where B is diffusion coefficient. In anomalous diffusion, mean square displacement proportional to p power alpha, and if alpha less than 1, then we have sub-diffusion. And uh, this is the diffusion that we got for in normal case. The diffusion is uh, less, um, is, um, is less fast than, uh, than normal diffusion. So what he did, he took the data from an experiment and uh, tried to fit uh, the model uh, there are different models in order to understand the source of anomalous diffusion. And we found that um, <coughs> chromatin together with lumen A for such kind of viscoelastic media, it means that chromatin is not free to move now. It means like an uh, environment has a memory. The probability to go left is not equal to probability to go right. Rather, in opposite way, if I'm going <coughs> left, there will be more chance that I will go right. It's like uh, if all of us now will hang our hands, 
uh, uh, our hand and we will try to move, it will be very difficult, yeah? Because I will, for example, I will hang guy and, he, and I will try to move left and he, will, uh, and he wants to move right, so it will be not like I'm doing a free motion. So the same, what we suggest happen in a cell uh, with climbing and chromatin. Climbing and prevent uh, from chromatin to move uh, free. Uh, it's known from the literature that vitamin A binds to love to alpha protein and to chromatin in the same region. So we asked ourselves if depletion of love to alpha will lead to the same effect on chromatin motion like vitamin A. And the answer was really surprising. Here I will just summarize a lot of experiments in, in this graph. Uh, we are, uh, this is the chromatin dynamics and this is water concentration and we found that depletion of love to alpha this is the opposite effect than vitamin A depletion. In the cells that we don't have love to alpha protein, the chromatin dynamics was less. And in opposite way, if I overexpress in the simple words, I added more love to alpha to the to the cell, the dynamic of chromatin increased. So we suggested that maybe there is such kind of competition between love to alpha and chromatin. Can you hear me? such kind of competition between love to alpha and chromatin. So in case when we have love to alpha, lamin uh, A will bind mostly to love to alpha and less to chromatin. So chromatin will be more free to move. And in opposite way. In order to, in order to, con uh, to confirm our suggestion, we performed an experiment which called continuous photo breaching. Um, in this experiment, we mark uh, cells with green fluorescent uh, GFP alignment A, and we imaged one point with very uh, with not high intense laser, and uh, we followed intensity as a function of time. So, if molecule is free to move, so the exchange between bleached and unbleached molecule, bleached means that I uh, damaged the fluorescent. So, the exchange between free, uh, free molecule will be and bound and not bound will be very fast, yes? So the intensity will not drop uh, down as a function of time, but if molecule is bound to some, for example, in our case we suggest that it's bound to chromatin, then uh, we'll, we will breach uh, the green fluorescent protein bound to lamin A, and the intensity will drop uh, with the time. So from such kind of experiment, we can, we can calculate the free fraction of uh, molecules of lamin A in la in com uh, and compare between normal cells, like you can see here, lab to alpha plus plus normal cell, and there is lab to alpha depleted cell, and we saw that indeed uh, in lab to alpha depleted cell, lamin A is much more bound to chromatin. So our suggestion was true. Just for control, we did the same experiment with love to alpha in lamin A depleted and normal cell, and you can see there is no difference. Blue and, uh, <coughs> and uh, <coughs> uh, 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 red curve are the same. So we can conclude that lamin A association protein love to alpha down regulate binding to lamin A, and by, and by this down regulate homotin mobility. So based on our experiment, we propose the model of homotin organization. Here you can see uh, like a schematic uh, picture of uh, homotin, of each, each uh, color with different homosomes. And uh, where we don't have lamin A, the homotin now is much more free to move. These stars are love to alpha, alone without lamin A, it has uh, do nothing with, with the homotin. But when I have uh, lamin A, then lamin A will bind to homotin, and by this prevent uh, for uh, to move uh, freely. So we suggest that uh, such kind of constrained chromatin uh, mobility maintains chromosome territory and uh, what makes me exciting from this kind of research is that with the help of biology and physics we found the new uh, function, a known function of two proteins, lamin A and love to alpha. Uh, I would like to thank my both supervisors, Yuval Garini and Yaron Chaftal, uh, Nova Koizer from uh, Yaron Chaftal lab, and of course, Eldar Captain and Moshe Littmer from our lab, and thank you for the attention.